and welcome back to the very beautiful, the very wonderful, and the very sunny wild. So yes, hello and welcome back. And any of you clever cookies might be able to notice I've not got my hat on, this is not the same scene. Because my editor, Eric, misplaced some of my recordings, so I'm having to do some of this retrospectively. So bear with me, but we'll still get the points across which are important. Yes, so today's discussion is about the Fujifilm X-T5 and the Fujifilm X-H2S. And I've had the pleasure of using the X-T5 for around a month now, and I own the X-H2S. So without further ado, let's get discussing these camera bodies. Okay, so the first points I'm gonna talk about are the cameras side by side. Now, just to start off with, the Fujifilm X-T5 has this beautiful, original classical look which drew me to Fujifilm in the first place when I bought the X-T3 many moons ago. In comparison to the X-H2S, it's a more modernized camera. It's hybrid, it's for filming, it's for photography. It's a bit of everything. It is ergonomic and it is functional, which is fine. That's the difference of the two of them. Because I know some people don't like the look, but you have to understand where that look has derived from and where it comes from. And that is the idea. And on the X-H2S, you've got this nice chunky grip, whereas on the X-T5, it's a bit more slender and lightweight, easy to travel with, pop in your bag, off you go. The X-H2S has got a little bit more weight to it, but not too much, but it's fine. It's quite robust. They are both weather sealed cameras, which I adore. I think that's brilliant. They both have dual card systems, but the X-H2S has a CF Express and SD card, whereas the X-T5 has two SD card slots. The main difference I have noticed with the two cameras and actually made a difference out in the field was the dial setup. Yes, you have those wonderful buttons on the X-T5, which is ease and accessibility for photography, which is great. But on the X-H2S, you just have the one command dial, which is beautiful to fit for filming and photography. The next thing that I noticed, which was a big difference to me and how I go about my photography, is the fact that the X-H2S has a fully articulated LCD screen. And I'm looking at myself, right now because it's so handy if you're doing vlogging like I do or self-portrait photography which I do to have that articulated sorry midges are getting me articulated screen <laughs> and it's been so good and so useful and actually it's enhanced a lot of what I can do on the X-T5 you have the angled up and down or the out to the side but it's not fully articulated again this might not be an issue for you if it's photography related but for me personally I love the fully articulatedness of the X-H2S. So yeah, the two of them, strong, sturdy, reliable, both fit very well in their own realm. And yeah, that's just the two of them, the main features side by side, which I noticed when using them. Let's go on to the next stuff. Okay, so the next point I wanna talk about is image quality. Now I have to say, when I first picked up the X-T5, I was like, oh, I don't know if I've made the right decision with purchasing the X-H2S. Because when I took a picture with the X-T5, I was like, oh my word, the refinement and just the depth on that image, like the details, the data, the clarity, everything was mwah, beautiful. Like you can't fault it. <laughs> it was stunning. And that's not to say it isn't on the X-H2S. I just think I noticed a little bit more refinement on the X-T5, maybe that's just me and depending on the subjects and the pictures I was taking, but I don't know. So I did have a moment of like, <laughs> have I bought the wrong thing? Um, but it was not short-lived, that sounds really bad, but as I'll talk a bit about filming, that's why I care. I was like, yeah, it suits me fine, whatever. But yeah, they're both fantastic. I can't knock them, I really can't. I'm just so pleased with them. Again, yeah, Fuji have done really well with this. I think you get quality on the pair of them. And I've got loads to show you, loads to make you go, ooh, ah, and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> Cause they are brilliant and yeah, can't fault it. So that's my yeah verdict of the two with their image quality. X-T5 I think just was like, yep. But the X-H2S is still fantastic. Still crisp, still clear, still beautiful, still lovely tones 
textures, clarity, saturation, all this, all the things you want from your photography. And I love this because I don't like to edit a lot. I actually quite like to keep the images as they are, as much as I can. Nothing to say it's right or wrong, that's just my style. But it's important to me because I think the world is beautiful enough and I just love capturing it with what I saw. And yes, you might have to tweak that depending on the film simulations you shoot with some reduced saturation or whatever, but I like to keep it true to character. And I think with Fujifilm, you can really do that with their equipment. And that's why I've always loved it. Their lenses are beautiful and the camera bodies too. They just work like this in harmony. <laughs> They're so good. Anyway, yeah. Top marks for the pair of them for image quality. Yes. Okay, so the next point I'm gonna discuss is ease of use. Um, I hope you can hear me. There's a tractor in the distance that's harvesting this field of oats and hopefully I won't get caught in it. <laughs> so ease of use, and it's an interesting point because the X-T5 is designed for photography and having that triangulation of shutter speed, ISO, your aperture all there makes it so easy and smooth. You can be like this and be like, yip, 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 yip. done, it's really good. And I've always loved that about the X-T series. I learned photography on the X-T3. I had that three and a half, four years ago. It was my first camera going into digital photography and I stuck the 56 millimeter on it. That's what I used for like two and a half, three years. <laughs> that was it, it was great. And because of that, it really developed my manual photography skills and the speed to be able to like just be like blip, 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 know where everything is so I think for ease of use and just ergonomics and actually practicalities the X-T5 is brilliant it really is I love it but on the other hand is the X-H2S what I'm on right now and as someone now who's transitioned from just not just photography but also to filming and videography the ease of use on the X-H2S is brilliant I've actually adapted the X-H2S to have the dials having my ISO, like the command dials, and um, my shutter speed, which is great. When you're swapping between filming and photography, I can be like this, jip, jip, and it literally swap between the two. If I want to film wildlife and shoot it, you can do the two in unison, and it is so good for that, and it makes it so fast as well. So the two cameras for ease of use, I think are both fantastic in their own realm. I think Fuji Film have put a lot of thought into how you can practically use the cameras in real life scenarios, and I've used them loads and they're both brilliant they really are and in terms of just something i wanted to touch upon is stability again i know it's meant to be great stability in both xt5 and xh2s now i must have a really steady hand but i never noticed an issue with stability with my xt3 so i must be like a brick wall like this i don't move so <laughs> for me stability has never been an issue only with the longer focal range like my 100 to 400 millimeter i had to be very steady with and maybe shooting with stuff like that with no stability has helped me become more stable, but I've not seen any issue with stability with the X-T5, the X-H2S. Again, both fantastic in the field. I've taken them over and both of them have been tested brilliantly. I do all my filming handheld. I don't have a gimbal um, and you can see the smoothness of that as well. So yeah, stability is brilliant as well. They both fit perfectly in your hand, using photography and for ease of use. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the next point I want to talk about is filming and I'll do my best to be quick with this but it's a topic I love and just to put it out there if you've never tried filming for wildlife stuff or just in general I highly recommend it whatever camera you have just give it a go and I think since I have been doing it it's really enhanced my photography and elevated my creation or creativity of my creation so yeah just give it a go it's fantastic now the X-T5 and the X-H2S are very different cameras for this. The X-H2S is a hybrid camera. It's for photography and filming and its whole design and ergonomics is for filming capabilities. It's got a stack sensor. It's got that really high quality filming. So it is made and designed for this. The X-T5 is not, but you can still do fantastic filming with it at the flick of a button. Cause I love the changes um, Fujifilm have made where you can swap from your stills to filming and just literally like bloop bloop button, which is brilliant. It really is good. And I don't have tons of footage of wildlife filming because I didn't have it for long enough. So I will show you other footage of other things I got, botanical feeling, and you'll see what I mean with the X-T5 of what you can achieve. So if you're looking for something you can grab and go with a photography camera 
and dabble in some really still good quality filming, the X-T5 is great. If you're looking for more of a punch in filming, and what I mean by this is, is that with the X-H2S, for example, one setting I love is that you can shoot in five times slower, still in 4K, which I adore. When I'm doing YouTube like I am right now and I wanna create cinematic stuff, I've noticed a huge difference in the quality of my filming just from having this simple feature that I can film in 4K at five times slower. It's fantastic, it really is really good. But again, they are still both fantastic, but the X-H2S is just that little bit more elevated with both filming and photography, whereas the X-T5, you can still do both at a great level. Yes. <laughs> Okay, the next point I'm going to quickly touch upon is autofocus. Yeah, I think I've had a few people ask me the difference with the autofocus with the X-T5 and X-H2S, but I don't think it's as simple as that, as weird as that sounds, hear me out. The two of them are very different. So yeah, I don't know. I didn't notice using each camera individually. I didn't notice a huge difference with the autofocus. I think they both did great. The um, AI animal tracking was brilliant. The autofocus continuous, where you can do the actual just normal tracking is fine. All these things, absolutely fine. So yeah, I don't think I had an issue with autofocus. Now and then it would waver depending on the situation. Uh, if I had a bird, for example, and the camera couldn't decide because it's maybe really bright light or a very dark lit background, it'd be like wavering like this. It wouldn't know what to focus with. But I haven't really had a problem and I know other people have. I don't know, I haven't, so <laughs> I think for me, autofocus has been fine. I think you just have to be patient and learn how to use your equipment, uh, learn how it performs, adjust your auto tracking, the uh, focus rate, speed. I have mine very specifically set to what I like, so I change it for my vlogging now, and I change it for when I'm out in the field. So you might need something that focuses faster like this, whereas when I'm doing vlogging, I have it slower. So I think you really have to become familiar with the actual focus settings but overall I think about 70% 75% of the time it was always in focus and it always does fine and this is just for the long telephoto lens that I'm on about here as well anything shorter I never miss focus my shorter focal lengths are fine it's just the longer focal length I find sometimes that's when it wavered that's where the confusions were but apart from that I had no issues with autofocus in general I don't know that's just what I found maybe coming from an old camera to like a new one so i went from xt3 to the xh2s like the autofocus on the xt3 bless it didn't have any animal tracking all these things so i've been used to doing everything manually so they're moving to this now i'm like oh my word so maybe that's something to bear in mind as well i'm not used to this enhancement and advance of uh <laughs> focusing <laughs> but overall for me both of them performed really really well in the autofocus and ai tracking subject tracking Okay, so the next point I'm going to touch upon, and I've discussed this in both the X-T5 and the 150 to 600 millimeter reviews, so I thought I'd just bring it all together and talk about it now. And that is drive settings, in particular, your high burst modes on both the X-T5 and the X-H2S. And what I found was the buffer time on the X-T5, in my experience with my SD card that I was using, which was 200 megabits a second, seemed slower but on the cf express card it was fantastic it was like smooth but i have to say i'm not going to be shooting 40 frames all the time it's not something i've ever used until now so i was just testing it out 
When I wanted to get birds in flight, I found it really useful, but I've never really used it otherwise apart from that. Just something to bear in mind with what you're going for. I found the faster paced stuff was possibly better on the XH2S and I found myself gravitating to that more because I kept having the buffer issues. And with the buffer issues, it meant that I couldn't switch between filming and photography because it was just buffering and taking its time. It would just freeze. Whereas on the XH2S, it was fine. Um, but yeah, that's kind of drive settings mixed with a couple of other bits. But yes, just stuff to bear in mind. That is all. Okay, so that just leads me to summarize this experience uh, with the two beautiful camera bodies, which is the X-T5 and the X-H2S. And I have to say, with whatever camera you end up owning, they are both fantastic. And this isn't a critique of either of them because I love the pair of them. They are wonderful cameras, built well, image quality is mwah, <laughs> filming is great fun. Yeah, they're just overall brilliant, brilliant cameras. So be happy if you have either of them. They are fantastic. <laughs> for me personally, I have gone with the X-H2S. The simple fact is, there's I think about three points. One is that I've been doing a lot more videography recently. It's been great for my YouTube having that articulated LCD, LCD screen, as I've mentioned. Filming in 4K at five times slower has been fantastic. I've noticed a huge enhancement in my filming because of the stack sensor, I think is wonderful. And also with the fast photography, if I want to do anything, I've got that good, good pace with this CF Express card. So for me personally, the X-H2S works really, really well. If videography on a high level, like if you're doing YouTube, doesn't matter, stick with the X-T5, because you'll save yourself a lot of money. Buy that better, faster reading SD card that I don't have, um, and just give it a go. It's a great, great camera. I will be getting my hands on soon the X-H2 the final piece of the puzzle that I haven't reviewed yet. And I will be testing that out and I will most likely do a comparison between the X-H2 and the X-H2S and maybe one about the X-T5 and the X-H2S, but nothing crazy long, just a quick touch on it because it might be useful or not. I don't know, let me know in the comments below if you think that. Yeah, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask, drop them below or just put your thoughts got any stories about how your day went let me know it's always nice to know <laughs> uh, yeah until next time you wonderful people stay you stay awesome stay wild and stay free and until next time goodbye for now bye Ooh. okay i hope you can see me i'm not looking like this i normally have it facing up more but anyway okay we can move on I have someone who wants to make an appearance. We have a special guest on the show today. One second. Turning this up, oh, too dark. Oh, bright, I mean. <laughs> we have Miss Cuteness. <laughs> Cuteness Everdeen. Hey, 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 hey. Living like we're renegade. Better be grateful for this people. I've been bitten, bitten like crazy, AKA. Twinkle Toes, so I sniff a lot. Muffin Chops, Chicken Dipper, Loaf of Bread, Eric von Lichtenstein. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Living like we're renegades. Renegade. That dog just laughed at me. I was gonna talk about auto focus. Oh, I'm not even in focus, that's awkward. Can't remember what I was gonna say. Oh, there's something in the tree. Sounded like, I don't know what it was. Captain Chunk. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing right now. Are you okay? That's where my hat went. <laughs> <laughs>